Hey, Stuart. I think you're muted, Stuart. Uh, greetings. <laughs> greetings uh, and welcome everyone. Carlene, uh, thanks for that reminder and uh, it's nice to see you again this evening. Uh, welcome everyone to the second installment of our March series, Religare Music. Uh, I am Stuart Nelson, the Vice President at the Institute for Spirituality and Health at the Texas Medical Center. Uh, at ISH, our mission is to enhance well-being by exploring the relationship between spirituality and health. Uh, I'd like at the outset to introduce and welcome our ASL interpreter, uh, Karina Heath from Nightingale Interpretive Services. Uh, welcome, Karina. We're very glad that you're here this evening with us. Um, and uh, Carlene, uh, director of HGO Co, uh, Houston Grand Opera's Community and Learning Initiative. Uh, welcome. Hi, Stuart. I'm so delighted. Can you believe we've um, this is already week two of the five week uh, series. So it's great to see you all of after all of the planning. Um, and like Stuart said, I'm the director of HGO Co, which is Houston Grand Opera's Community and Learning Initiative. This series is part of our ongoing partnership uh, through HGO's Seeking the Human Spirit Initiative. And this is a six-year multidisciplinary initiative designed to highlight the universal spiritual themes raised in opera and to expand and deepen Houstonians' connections to opera and art. Great. Well, it sure is a, a wonderful collaboration. Um, and if you're joining us for the first time this evening, uh, just know that Religare Music is part of a wider series uh, called Religare uh, that the Institute has sponsored. Um, that explores some of the essential building blocks of cultural and religious traditions like prayer um, and food and architecture. Um, religare in Latin is considered by some scholars to be the root word for religion. Um, it means to bind or to bind fast or bind again. Um, and religare music del delves into the rich musical traditions that have inspired and communicated profound aspects of uh, human experience for millennia. Um, so through the components of music uh, that we've themed our episodes after, rhythm last time, melody this evening, harmony, lyrics, and silence, uh, you may see connections between cultures and spiritual traditions uh, where none were present to you before. Um, so today we're focusing on the element of melody. Uh, and to begin, our moderator, Anthony Brandt, will share some thoughts on melody. Um, Anthony Brandt is a composer and professor of composition and theory at Rice University's Shepherd School of Music. Welcome, Tony. Uh, we're Thank really you. glad you're here this evening. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you, Carlene. It's wonderful to be with all of you tonight. So melody is typically described as a pleasing or memorable musical line. But of course, it's much more than that. It's the musical signature of songs and instrumental pieces. It's sometimes our biggest takeaway from a musical work, what we remember the best. It's what we sing as we leave the concert hall or the next morning in the shower. At its loftiest, it can be our connection to the divine. Here's a classic melody from Borodin's Polovetsian Dances. Yet, Music is just vibrating air, and melody has no real physical existence outside of our memory. So how does it make such a strong impact on us? And the answer is human pattern recognition. Thanks to the human brain's magical ability to recognize patterns, we are as adept at distinguishing melodies as we are at distinguishing human faces. Change the context, change the instruments, even disguise the melody a little, and we're still able to recognize it. Next slide, Amy. And one more example. So 
So how does that work? Well, in Western music, we typically rely on three musical features to recognize melodies. First, there's the shape of the melody, its contour, when and where it rises and falls, and by how much. Here's the opening theme of Bartok's Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celeste. When that melody comes back in the last movement, Bartok changes its inner details, but we still recognize the theme from its contour and rhythm. Speaking of rhythm, that's another memorable feature of melody. Here's the start of the last movement of Beethoven's fourth piano concerto. Later in the movement, the piano mimics the rhythm of the theme with only hints of the melodic line. Finally, the harmonic progression underlying a theme helps us to recognize it, even when the melody itself is quite distorted. Here's the opening of the third movement of Brahms's second clarinet sonata. Later in the movement, the following passage occurs. Thanks to the harmonic progression, we recognize that this isn't a brand new melody, but rather a reworking of the earlier one. Western melodies only make sense to us because our brains can follow patterns of contour, rhythm, and harmony. It's those patterns and our ability to recognize them that warm our hearts and lift our spirits. Now, traditional Western melodies tend to be very internally repetitive, have a regular rhythm and phrase structure, and need to be sung in tune to fit with the harmony. Melodies in other cultures can be quite different. For instance, in the psalmody of the Hebrides Islands, the congregation sings together, but is not coordinated by a shared pulse. Instead, everyone sings the melody at their own speed. The phrases of this lullaby of the Nakundu tribe of Africa has a very irregular phrase structure. The layering of voices in this Bulgarian folk melody allows for dissonances that would not be permitted in traditional Western music.
Finally, the combination of voices in this pauhiri, the welcoming ceremony of the Maori people of New Zealand, has a different sense of tuning and vocal combination than in the West. There is an amazing variety of melodies and how they are treated across world musical traditions. In fact, even the way pitches, the building blocks of melody, are perceived varies across cultures. Listen to the following example. So I bet a lot of you in our audience tonight heard the melodic line go down. Well, that turns out to be culturally conditioned. In the West, we apply spatial metaphors to pitch, but there are other cultures that describe pitches as old and young, and others still that refer to them as large and small. For the Shawana people of Zimbabwe, low pitches are crocodiles, and high ones are people who chase after crocodiles. It's hard to know if those other cultures internalize melodies in the same way that we do. Nevertheless, some scientists have suggested that there are six universal types of song that can be recognized across culture. Love songs, healing songs, dance songs, work songs, lullabies, and songs of mourning. Let's put that to the test. I'm gonna play two short excerpts Please match each one with the category that you think fits best. And uh, we can go past the next slide and go straight to the example. Este niño lindo, que nació de día, quiere que lo lleve a una dulcería. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the first example. Match that with the type you feel fits best. Now let's try the second one. So what do you feel that one matches with? So you might be surprised to find out that both songs were lullabies. In many cultures, a lullaby, of course, involves singing exactly the same music over and over while getting softer and softer. However, when Beb and Zelly Pygmies want to put their children to sleep, they sing louder and pat their children on the head. So even though there are consistencies across cultures, we must always be careful about claiming that a musical practice is universal. Over the span of tens of thousands of years, humans have created a staggering variety of melodies. Virtually every musical tradition speaks through melody, but what those melodies say and how we understand and appreciate them varies widely. That diversity is a tribute to the expansiveness of human imagination. Thank you, and now I'm happy to send it back to Stuart. Oh, uh, Stuart, I think you're muted. muted. I said, uh, oh, thank you, uh, Tony. That's the second time this evening. Um, thank you for that illuminating talk. And uh, I have to admit, I did not get either of those. Uh, I, I thought the first one <laughs> might be healing or, or love, uh, but lullaby was, was, was in my mind too. Um, the second one, definitely not. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd just like to ask you, um, you know, at, at ISH, sometimes we talk about spirituality as the innate ability to connect and make connections in the world. 
And um, our, our impressive ability to uh, recognize melodies seems to also be inherently connective um, in terms of the pattern recognition you were speaking of. So do you see a relationship between uh, the human spirit and uh, music cognition? Oh, you oh. bet, yeah. I would say patterns create understanding between people and creativity helps to hold our attention. And understanding and attention together is connection. And so, you know, the creative use of patterns is fundamental to how we, as you so beautifully put it, bind ourselves together. And, you know, spiritual practices are a lofty reflection of that. Rituals often provide the patterns, which then creativity keeps alive and relevant and fresh. Wow, so beautiful. Well, um, I look forward to, uh, to uh, hearing your remarks uh, in our panel discussion at the end of the evening. Uh, but now we're going to turn it over to our first performer of the, of the night. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Brandt, for your remarks. Thank you, sir. So I'd like to now introduce uh, Fatih Bayram, a member of the Istanbul Trio, who will be sharing some Sufi prayer music. Uh, welcome. Hello. Hi, Stuart. How are you? Good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the music we'll be hearing tonight? Sure, sure. First of all, I just wanted to say I'm delighted to be a part of this program on behalf of the other two of the Istanbul Trio, my beloved musician friends, Aslihan and Arturo Lerkishi. I'd like to thank you, Stuart and uh, Carlene, Tony, Andy, for this valuable gathering. Before I give you a brief intro about the melodies that you'll be listening tonight, I'd like to tell you about Istanbul Trio. Although Aslihan and Arturo Lerkishi are settled in New Jersey now, they spend majority of their lives in Istanbul, which is, historically speaking, the crossroads of many civilizations and various cultures. Um, they grew up with the music originated in Anatolia. Anatolia is the peninsula from Mesopotamia stretching to the Balkans, so it's a, it's a very diverse uh, uh, cultural uh, geography, uh, I'd say. So the classical Turkish music, the music that they were born into, learned, performed, and taught for many years, um, has a long history and contains a large scale of intercultural elements in it. Aslihan and Ertuğrul are experts in classical Turkish music, perhaps like many other great musicians uh, in Turkey. However, they are unique in one way. In the beginning of 2000s, they released an album called uh, Chorus of Little Prayers, or they called it Little pa Prayers Group. Um, this was an attempt of sp spiritual healing, targeting mainly the wounds of young people. Um, so this al album sold over a million only in Turkey, so which was pretty impressive uh, for that time. I'd say these compositions, melodies, initiated a unique genre in terms of content. So, and many others produced similar works of art after being inspired by this album. Uh, now, they see New York as their new home, which we can say cross, crossroads of world cultures, and they continue to teach at their school of music, which they call Nir Nirvana, which I, again, find very meaningful. And together we perform throughout the US. Um, so the melodies that you'll be listening to uh, is from one of those performances. Uh, my great musician friends, Philip Mayer, Umut Yashmut, Ian Kenselar, and Peter Deverington has joined the Istanbul Trio there uh, for that performance. The first one is a Sufi song in Nihavend uh, scale, which is in D minor with some microtonal embroidery in it. Um, so that it's called Ya Rabbi Ashken Verbana. A literal translation could be, Oh Lord, give me your love, in the sense that teach me how to love in the best possible way. So Arturo decided to connect this tune to another Bektashi tune called Demedimmi, which translates, Didn't I tell you, oh so. so. Again, in the same makam, Nihavent, or D minor, um, the theme is basically about self-interrogation. So this can, uh, can be seen as a method of ripening one's soul in Anatolian Bektashi culture or in Sufi tradition also. 
So, Stuart, you'll also notice a whirling dervish, which uh, represents the Mevlawi tradition there. I'm not going to go into the details of that since our subject matter is only melody here. <laughs> so, but it's all about the effort of reaching this immaculate state of spirituality. So, hope you enjoy it. Oh, uh -huh. 
Thanks, Fatih. Um, I think there was some there was some uh, some pausing there, but what I was really struck with was uh, some of the repetition and lyrics that I heard. Uh, could you could you kind of? Uh, I think that may speak a little bit to some of the uh, some of the the purpose of healing. I mean, this kind of rhythmic um, uh, sound that I heard. Can you can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, actually, this was one, not one of the pieces that I was expecting uh, to hear tonight. But again, this is a great example uh, about a spiritual healing. Um, in, in that repetition, there's this uh, sorrow in the heart. And uh, please don't make me cry. Uh, which is, uh, I am um, devastated. Please be, become some sort of a remedy for me. That's how uh, the repetition goes. So this was uh, Ashk, um, um, composed by Arturul Erkishi, uh, and, uh, um, and it's a beautiful composition, by the way. Um, I, I think we're going to have uh, another one on the horizon soon. All right, thank you. Um, so I believe uh, this segment is uh, just gonna end and there's gonna be a, a, a brief pause. I think there's a technical issue that we're, uh, working through. So to all of you who are logged in and watching, I apologize, but we're just going to have a brief pause. Carlene, you're muted, Carlene. We're going to pause here and just reboot. Please be patient. This is, of course, the first time this has happened. We will fix it and we'll be back. Um, and please, if we sign off for a minute, please just be patient. We'll be right back.
And we're back, I believe. Uh, so are we going to um, bring Fatih back on or uh, are we going to... Um... I think let's keep moving. And what we'll do, Stuart and everyone, uh, when we repost this, we'll make sure that all of the recordings that have been shown so far tonight, we'll make sure they're sound and clear so you can go back in and take, and take a listen to that. And then we'll pick up the conversation. Uh, we'll, we wanna leave plenty of time for the panel conversation. So we'll bring Fateh back in at that point, if that sounds okay. Okay, great. That sounds wonderful. So, Carlene, I will turn it over to you to introduce our next artist. Great. So, uh, thank you. And I'd like to welcome our next guest. Uh, this is Tim Keeler, who's the music director of the famed choral group Chanticleer. And I have to say, I am a sh I'm a fan. I'm a total fan. I'm fangirling here, Tim. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for having us on the show today. It's a lovely lineup, some brilliant musicians and some terrific music. So we're honored to be a part of it. Oh, well, and again, you know, I have to say I heard Chanticleer for the first time when I, when I taught at SUNY Potsdam, and I think it was like 1992. And I was just floored. I remember sitting in Hosmer Hall and just kind of going, I had no idea. And so, it, and, and I, I, I have many recordings. Again, I am quite the fan. And so I am so honored uh, that you would take the time and share uh, a little bit uh, of, of your music. Can you tell us about the group Ch Chanticleer and uh, their, your mission, your musical mission? Absolutely. Yeah, Chanticleer, as you said, um, has been sort of a staple of choral music in America for a while now. We were started in 1978 as a, a collection of uh, 12 singers singing soprano, alto, tenor, bass, um, but uh, intriguingly only uh, countertenors, tenors, and basses. So um, no true sopranos or altos in the group, uh, which makes for a very distinctive and unique sound and something that we're very proud of. We're also one of two full-time choral ensembles in America. Uh, which uh, is something we're very proud of and something we're very um, privileged to have, actually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I have to say that this this was a little engineered by me because I am also a huge fan of the music of Hildegard von Bingen. And um, she is one of my most, most ins I, I get the, some of the, my most ins inspiration from her music. And a lot of people don't know about her. Um, she uh, was a um, a cloistered nun and a and a composer, one of the first composers that we really know about today. That's right. And um, and so, could you share with us a little bit about this beautiful musical piece that Chanticleer will sing? I will. Yeah, as you said, Hildegard von Bingen, a, a German composer and uh, a Renaissance woman before the Renaissance. She was living around the year 1150, and she was uh, she wrote music, uh, she wrote lyrics, she wrote uh, literature and books about science. She really did everything. It was very inspirational. Uh, and so she has a set of um, collections of, of antiphons, mostly, uh, that she not only wrote the music for, but she wrote the lyrics to as well. So the selection that um, you're about to hear is uh, a piece by her called um, O Frontens Virga, uh, which translates to O Blooming Branch. Um, virga meaning branch and Virgo meaning uh, virgin. So this is actually an antiphon for the, the Virgin Mary. Uh, and because uh, amongst all of her uh, many accomplishments, uh, Hildegard actually was a, an abbess at a convent that she started herself. So this is a, a piece that she conceived from the ground up. Uh, and this is our, our performance that we sang at the Marinsky Theater in, in Russia a few years back. And it's actually a bit of an arrangement. The, the Hildegard song itself is just a melody. It's a beautiful, simple melody. And so this is a, a bit of a spin on it by a previous music director, Jace Wittick. He uh, mm -hmm. interpreted it a little bit and added a couple notes here and there just to give it a little more atmosphere. Great. Um, let's take a look at this uh, wonderful piece. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, in a way, it kind of worked out. Again, sorry, we're just tonight we, we're getting bitten by the gremlins here. But honestly, you know, honestly, just having to focus on that beautiful performance orally, orally is uh, was a treat. Um, but can you can anything else you want to add about that, Tim? Yeah, it, it, I agree. It was it's very meditative to just listen to it on its own. I, I spoke with the soloist you heard, Adam Ward, uh, briefly before coming to chat with you all tonight, and he he said something very profound. He said, um, when I did that performance, I, I knew that I had to 
find Hildegard and hold her hand. And, and she oh. she led him through it. It was a, I know it was a meditative experience for us listening to it, and also uh, one for him as well as he was performing it. Oh, and again, it it just speaks of that. Even that quote just speaks of the connection, the profound connection that can come from uh, being in that state of bliss. Really, Absolutely. it's just beautiful. Oh, this was just lovely, Tim. We'll look forward to your contributions to the chat when we come back with you. So thank you so much. And uh, um, our final guest for the evening is Pandit uh, Sumangosh. He's a Hindustani classical music virtuoso. Uh, welcome, Pandit Ji, and, and also to your lovely wife, Sashi. How are you this evening? Doing very well. Thank you so very much. Thank oh, you. Berlin. We know we're not going to have the glitches with you because you're performing live tonight. Yes. <laughs> thanks. <Hope so. laughs> Firstly, thanks for the kind invitation. And it's a it's it's an honor to be here always at the Houston Grand Opera and today in the middle of all wonderful distinguished people. And uh, I'm, we are really carried away by the music which we have heard so far. Isn't so it, Jeff? Oh, oh, well, I have to tell, there, you know, we have a connection because, you know, Pandit ha and Sashi have performed uh, within one of uh, HGO Co's uh, filmed projects from two years ago called A Rose, uh, music by Kamala Son uh, Shankaram. And we actually just relaunched that series uh, last week and had a watch party. And I just got to enjoy that music all over again. And, uh, and so could you tell us a little bit about, um, about what you will be performing this evening? Yeah, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, let me speak about the compositions or the repertoire we have chosen. Mm -hmm. The first one I will do for you, we will sing for you, is a devotional composition from our uh, genre of Indian classical music. So there are different segments of devotional music there, but there are some which generally speak about life, speak about things which are very abstract, which are not a part of probably very obviously a part of our day-to-day -day life, but those are there. It is almost like, you know, things which are beyond the wall, not written on the wall, but which are as relevant as what is written there on the wall, mm -hmm. if not more. Mm. Right? So the theme of this composition is about mind, the thought process. So what it says is, you know, uh, one can win the world, one can win everything in life by the strength of maybe power, maybe wealth, maybe resources. But perhaps the most difficult thing to win over is our own mind. Mm. And make it work, make it move in the desired direction so that I am on the right path by the end of the day. Mm. So the final verdict or final words, it says that the only way to ensure that is by following the path of honesty, humility, and truth. Mm. And one who follows that, he or she finally arrives at the world or the realm of life where there is only happiness, nothing else. Mm. So the spiritual connection is all about Indian classical music. Okay, Indian classical music is all about spirituality. So this composition only provides a glimpse of that. Right. Okay. Understood. If, uh, let me see, sometimes, you know, since it's all extempore, we get a little carried away while, while singing. If time permits, if I'm able to, you know, put it in the desired time frame, 
probably add one more composition. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, after this, if you have some more few minutes, I'll say a few words about Indian classical music in general, the connection between melody and spirituality in this right. stream of music. Okay. Excellent. So Great. do we have do we have your permission to go ahead and sing? Yes, yes, I think so. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thanks. Bank nal raslan Bank nal raslan Upper Jean Oh, yes, I 
के विध में समझा मन तो है के विध में समझा ज्ञान ना हो ज्ञान सिखाओ सत्य की राह चलाओ मन रे कहत कबीर सुनो भैसाधु कहत कबीर सुनो भय साधो अमरा पुर पहुँचाओ मन रे अमरा पुर अमरा पुर अमरा पुर पहुँचाओ मन तो है विध में समझाओ मन रे 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 ओह थैंक यू um just beautiful and to again just to allow that music to kind of infuse our minds and bodies uh we're extremely grateful i'm going to say for the sake of time pandachi i'd like to have i'd like to have your discussion of hindustani classical singing to come into the panel discussion sure. and then if it's okay with you we'll uh as we close this evening i would love you and sashi to close this evenings uh then at the end with your second piece if you would honor us with that we would That's be really a honor thank you so very much oh thank you and so if we could bring back bring in all of our panelists and uh musicians there we all are thank you um and again what we'll do is um when we the 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 editing we in editing prep prop in when we get to after the performance when we edit this we'll make sure that everything is all sound and clear all of our musical examples and um so we invite anyone to come back and uh and join and and share share this evening's episode again um tony i i'm curious to know we'll start with you um if what are some of the connections you saw this evening between these three performances well thank you for this beautiful music it was just thrilling to hear and i think you know one unifying feature is the human voice and what lies naturally and comfortably for the voice anchors all of the repertoire that we heard tonight and that's i think part of its communicative power it's it's sort of a way obviously of amplifying speech and making a message which in words can disappear very quickly uh have an extra power and resonance that's lovely and tony i know you have some uh questions that you'd like to <laughs> engage with the rest of the panel sure uh you know one of the things of course that's thrilling is that some of the music you play tonight is from very ancient traditions and in the case of Hildegard von Bingen, it's almost a thousand years old. Uh, what do you feel this music still brings to us today? And is there a sense of, you know, not only communicating among ourselves, but also with the people who have come before us? 
I think that's a that's a great question, and and the relevancy of any musical style, I think, is is inherent in in its applicability to to capture a, a feeling and a and a and a moment, um, regardless of time. And fortunately, we have things written down from Hildegard von Bingen, but there's a lot of music that is just uh, sustained via oral traditions, and it's really a capturing that essence of that music, um, both the the sound, but also the the meaning behind it, um, the spirituality behind it. Um, and I, I think if, as long as you can capture that, that's the sort of the, the through line between the um, centuries. Mm. Absolutely. And and I would say too, talking about oral tradition, uh, Pandachi, you you can speak definitely speak to that. And um, can you tie that in a little bit to to your study of um, Hindustani classical music? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> See, this tradition it dates back to thousands of years. Okay. So now Throughout all these years and centuries, there have been documented details of what this music is all about. Of course, it has evolved with time. and But, you know, what has happened is the melody in this music is called rag. We call it rag. So rag, the shape of rag, the... the entire detail about a rag. It's well documented, but it's open to interpretations by individuals. So mm -hmm. it's a combination of both. On one hand, it's very strictly follows, it strictly follows the grammatical parameters. At the same time, people who have attained that height, who have elevated themselves to that level of musicianship, they have every freedom to explore the rag every other day. In fact, the members of the audience who come to listen to this music, they expect the artist to come up with newer things yeah. every day. And the artist also he himself doesn't know what's going to happen next moment, yeah. what he's going to produce next minute. In fact, only this in Indian tradition, uh, very old uh, civilizational things are like this. It's only the moment is true. What has the moment which has passed doesn't hold good anymore. The moment which is going to come next, we don't know what's going to happen. So this moment is true. The musically is also that's true. Mm. So we follow a wonderful combination of written guidelines as well as instincts, musical instincts that we develop through training, through, we call it sadhana, meaning basically practice, and that practice has got a lot to do with spiritual elevation. It cannot be separated out. Mm. That's how it is. Mm. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks. And and Fatih, do you do you know, like can you also share in, in, in your music, in your tradition, what um, how how is spirituality connected to the music that that you make as well? Sure. Um, I just wanted to uh, share my own experience about uh, when when I'm performing with uh, Arturo and Aslihan. Um, when you like a melody, you play it and you enjoy it, no matter what the lyrics are all about, uh, however you feel about it. When you enjoy the melody, you just play it. That's how I used to feel. After I met with them, I, I, something caught my attention there. Um, sincerity was... Uh, their target there. So um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, uh, one of the uh, theme uh, themes of, uh, of one of the uh, songs that I uh, shared with Andy before, um, it was about self-interrogation. Um, this is a method of ripening one's soul in um, Sufi uh, tradition or, or I'd say in Anatolian uh, culture cultures, in many cultures, actually. So something caught my attention. If, if Aslihan and Arturo, if they don't feel like it, if they, don't, if they cannot put full sincerity into that song, they don't do it there. 
even in a in a in a concert in a well written let's say we have a playlist and we decided that we were going to do these songs and we go to the concert and Arturo looks at me and says no let's skip this I don't I, I'm not feeling it let's move mm -hmm. on to the next one so sincerity is the main thing there otherwise if you don't feel it deep inside it's not going to reach to the audience and our words are not going to mean anything so that was one of the most important things that ca that caught my attention since i started working with them so i say sincerity is the main thing mm. and and also you and i hear similar similar uh concepts coming also that pandachi talked about in terms of that you know being in the moment and 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 being in that state of exactly. um of i i would call bliss there are many names for it um obviously we we all try to achieve that in in a variety of practices we have a couple of questions from our audience that i want to jump to the first one is it appears the love for melody is a learned gift a heartfelt language that may not fully uh, be but may not be fully appreciated by others who have not been brought up in that particular culture. Is that true? And it, Tony, you talked a little bit about that. I think you shared sort of like how we and to how we are, how we are raised within a cut, how much culture has to do with how much we understand the patterns that you spoke about at the beginning of the program. So it is true. There's a lot about the particulars of a music that we love that is enculturated. A good example in Western music is the major and minor modes, which is one of the fastest ways music in the West communicates being happy or sad or positive or negative emotion. But actually, that's not absolute. There are cultures that get married in, to music in minor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm part of a, a, an interesting experiment at Houston Methodist Hospital's uh, Center for Performing Arts Medicine, where we actually played a playlist of music to people while they were in an fMRI scanner, music that they brought in themselves, music from Western culture they'd be familiar with, and then music we, we thought they wouldn't probably have ever been exposed to. In this case, we picked Gagaku, the court music of ancient Japan which is a thousand years old and in Japan is considered one of the most lofty kinds of music. When the Western ears though were in the scanner, you couldn't tell the difference between them listening to noise and listening to the gagaku. Interesting. And whereas their brain completely lit up when they were listening to their self-selected music, it hardly responded at all when they were hearing the gagaku. And again, it's important to, rem to re emphasize Gakaku is deeply the music of another culture. It is, again, exalted and noble and has been around for a thousand years and continues to be played. So it just shows you how much enculturation plays a role. Now, all that being said, there are wonderful bonds between different musical traditions. Mm -hmm. And as we've all felt so powerfully during this pandemic, we have a great human need to connect with each other and we want to understand each other. I think the best parts of ourselves want to do that. And, you know, again, thanks to all the tools that we have going in our brain that are constantly seeking out patterns, it's not necessarily a big leap to join with another culture's tradition and understand it. And, and maybe music has an incredible advantage over language in that respect, because you can so much more easily immerse yourself in another musical tradition and really have it become part of you. Mm. Yeah, and would anyone like to add to that? I think that that's that's a it's beautifully explained. Um, it it just it to me it, again it's it's there is a uh, oftentimes in the work we do we play certain music and we also we oftentimes hear the um, we hear we hear the word nostalgia raised with certain kinds of music and i would assume that again that is something that again it's it um it is what we're again you bring it you brought it so well to the surface with the with the samples of the lullaby of the two lullabies i think that is a great example of how how different cultures uh embrace patterns and sound 
um, in their in their practices. Um, can um, we do have another um, question uh, actually? And Tony, I think uh, I, I just sort of wanted before we end, I wanted to just ask each of you, what did each of you notice in someone else's performance that um, uh, that you found familiar or soothing or something that just it, what what cap you know what what uh, what came to the surface for you about one of the other traditions that each of you heard tonight um, and let's see uh, fight could you start would you mind starting should I uh, okay uh, well <laughs> or would, would you like to <laughs> yeah no go ahead okay. Well, um, again, I'll come back to the same exact uh, topic, sincerity. I feel, I feel like uh, um, all of the performers, they put their heart into it. And I, I could feel that this was uh, something phenomenal. I, I, I could feel their sincerity. And uh, this is, this is reach out to one another. It's all about our hearts being connected. And music is the only way to do this. So I really appreciate uh, their performances and I'm honored to be among uh, 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 wonderful people uh, tonight. Uh, this is this is so, uh, it's a blessing. Thank you. Great. And Pandachit, uh, what, what came to the surface for you when you heard the other music? Uh, firstly, we enjoyed a lot the music. Excellent music we heard today, this evening through different artists. But the point that came again in my mind that, you know, I'm again convinced that music, melody, spirituality, these are all part of the same package. Hmm. So, and, you know, there is no borderline based on origin, nationality, language, you know, faith, whatever we may think of, nothing can separate people when it comes to music, because it has got to do with pure feelings. Music, sometimes people ask me what sort of music to listen to. I say, listen to music. Don't yeah. listen, it's not music, but it's being portrayed as music. That says everything. Thank listen. you. Thank you. And Tim, um, what uh, I'm curious because again, being performing mainly in the Western Western European style, what did you, what what similarities or uh, inspirations did you did you find tonight? Well, I think I think uh, Fata hit the nail on the head. It's it's I love the word you used. It's it's sincerity, and talk, we're talking about patterns and melodies, right? That was how we started this, and we're talking about patterns and performance amongst between everybody it's the it's that sincerity that's that's the pattern and it's that that willingness to be vulnerable in the moment and to trust the performers you're with and to trust your audience to to express that sincerity and to really inhabit whatever it is you're trying to convey i think that's the sort of the crux of of being a musician and it was on full display i think tonight mm. Thank you. And, and again, I want to thank everyone uh, tonight for what a fascinating evening. And again, when we, when we uh, edit this, uh, edit tonight's performance episode, we will make sure all the musical examples are clear and sound and all the, and everything. And uh, we appreciate your patience. And um, I, I, again, this is, it's an honor to be in the same uh, virtual room with all of you tonight. I, f I feel this has been a holy place this evening. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, Stuart? Yeah, just a deep, deep expression of gratitude. Um, I'm so just uh, joyed to be with you all this evening. Thanks for your time and your talent and energy this evening. Um, for the audience, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, be sure to tune in um, next time uh, in one week from this evening and like and share this video and definitely follow us on Facebook and YouTube for up-to-date details about our forthcoming events. Great. And for more information about other programming offered by the Institute for Spirituality and Health 
and HGO Co. Please visit our respective uh, websites at spiritualityandhealth.org and hgoco.org. Great. Thanks again to everyone. And uh, thank you to our audience, especially for joining us and your patience this evening. And we'll see you next week. And so Padachi and uh, Sashi, would you please uh, share with sure. us uh, yes, your yes. second piece? Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Dani ta dani der der dani ta na ta dar dim 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 der der na der ta dar dar. Oh dani ta dani der der dani ta na ta dar dim 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 der der na der ta dar dar. Oh dani ta dani der der dani ta na ta dar dim 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 der der na. Gare gare da ba ma pa ba ma gare ga ma gare da ni da ni re 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 oh da ni sare ga ma ba ma gare ga ma ba da ni da ba ma ba da ni da re ni re sare da sare da ni ba ni ba da ba ma da ma pa ma gare ma gare da ni sare sare re ni sare sare re ni sare sare re oh da ni da re da re da ni. Na der der dani dum der der dani dim ta der na na der der dani dum der der dani dim ta der alali ya alali ya alalu meli ya la alali ya alali ya alalu meli ya la kranda te 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 gadi ye na de ta da de da o da ni ta da der der dani ta na ta da de di di. दानी <laughs> Sadhana Baba Baba 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 Sadhana Baba Baba